In this series of videos, we're going to look at how to produce and consume JSON in a C Sharp Visual Studio 2017 project. So JSON is a relatively recent, uh, but also very popular data interchange format. It really has a, a big hand in mobile. If you take a look at my channel, I have several videos that describe how to parse JSON in an Android app. JSON is very similar to XML, but it's a bit more lightweight. In XML, you have an open and a closed tag, which both have the same name, so there's a bit of redundancy in there. In JSON, we tend to use a more symbolic nature, which is still human-readable to some degree, but it cuts down on that redundancy. So, first of all, uh, a few notes. We know that uh, if we take a look at JSON, it kind of looks, we'll go like this, it kind of looks like this. Uh, so we know that a, a curly indicates an object, a square bracket indicates an array, more on that to come. Uh, we also know that it tends to be name value pairs. So you see a name and then a colon and then a value. So that's one way to take a look at JSON. We can also put it in an online JSON viewer like this one at jsonviewer.stack.hu. And then when I click on Viewer, I can view this as a tree. So it's quite a handy way to uh, get a nice human readable look at JSON. We know that JSON is very popular now. And as a matter of fact, it is uh, common to use for open data. Uh, here's an example of the Cincinnati Open Data Initiative. Chicago, Seattle, many other cities uh, have a similar open data initiative uh, based on things like uh, Socrata, what's called a SOTA API. So we can take a look here at Cincinnati Vendor Payments and we can click on, there is a link down here, it looks like I passed it, uh, but uh, yeah, we can click on this little link to take a look at the JSON under the covers and get an idea of the data that we can consume in our JSON service. So anyway, in Visual Studio, a plugin that is very frequently used for JSON parsing is called JSON.net. Uh, very straightforward, very easy to use. So it is a plugin, so we do need to install it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to my uh, application. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose add, uh, or actually manage, I'm assuming that's pronounced nugget. <laughs> Looks like nugget to me. And we see that actually what's the first one to come up, but uh, JSON. So in case that's not though, I can just search for JSON.net and I am looking for a contribution from Newtonsoft and sure enough, there it is. So I select and I choose install and we'll let this work its magic. I'll choose okay and we'll let it go. And didn't take too long, it looks like we're all set. Now let's make an ASPX page that we can use kind of as a, as a home base for our JSON file. So uh, right click and I'm simply going to say new web form and we'll call this, uh, I hate to give it a generic name, but we'll just call it JSON. Uh, and there we go. So I go to design view and just to see how things are working, I'm going to snap a button onto the page and we'll give this button a handler by double clicking just like so. Now, this is where it is helpful to take a look back again at our JSON viewer. And we see that we have a collection of plants here. So Circus canadensis, uh, lavender twist, red bud, so on and so forth. But we see that this guy has uh, essentially five attributes and this is consistent as we look at each of these items. So ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common, just like so. So let's represent this with a concise class. I'm going to go to my project and I'm going to say uh, new item. And we are going to just make this normal old class. So just a moment, there's our class right there. And I'm going to call this plant.cs. So this plant singular. So this is a traditional uh, kind of data DTO, something that's describing some noun, a traditional class. So I'll start by saying, uh, let's say int ID to represent the ID, then string genus and string species string cultivar, whoops, terminate with a semicolon, string common underscore name, just like so, that'll be fine. Okay, now for each of these, we need to encapsulate them. So I simply highlight, and then I right click, and then I say quick actions and refactorings, and encapsulate fields and use property, yeah, that's fine. Uh, click this, this will handle them all at once. So you see what we end up with is we end up with a series of capital letters uh, that are very similar to the attributes that we've defined above. 
it's a good idea to go ahead and make these guys private because they're internal, uh, a, little, a little more secure. So we go ahead and choose save. Now I'm going to go back to the code behind of the page that we're working on. And I have a button click handler for the button that I have on my page. And so I'm simply going to construct a plant object and populate it. So plant redbud equals new plant, like so. This is where that kind of noun concept of a class is very important because we can put everything that describes a redbud tree into this redbud object. So redbud.genus equals circus, okay. Uh, redbud.species equals canadensis, okay. Redbud.cultivar, uh, we'll call this one Ruby Falls. Okay, redbud dot common name, and we will call this one Ruby Falls Redbud. Just like so, terminate with a semicolon. Now, uh, let me put a few comments here. So, create an object. Okay, and now we're going to say uh, convert to JSON. This is surprisingly easy. I guess I should not say surprisingly. You never know what's easy anymore. But uh, in any case, JSON convert dot serialize object. Uh, if you have not yet imported this class, it will probably redline JSON convert. Just click on the light bulb. Say yes. I want to use uh, newtonsoft.json. That's what we want to use. So JSON convert serialize object, and then I simply pass in that. Uh, oops, that redbud. Uh, like I have here. And that's going to return to me a string that represents JSON plant, that represents this red bud in JSON format. So if I want to just quickly take a view of this, I'll go back to my visual, my look and feel, and I will go to my toolbox, and I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I will drop a text box onto the toolbox. Now, the trick is, this isn't really a good way to consume JSON because you have to walk into the text box, which is in a page. It's really better to have a page that just gives you the JSON data. But nonetheless, uh, we can work with this for the moment and then refactor it later. So this text box, I am going to find the ID. And you know, I always like to change the ID if I'm going to program against something. So a TXT JSON output, something like that. There we go. And save. Now back to the code behind, and I'm going to say txt JSON output dot text equals JSON plant. Okay, terminate with a semicolon and save. And let's take a look. So once I save this, I'm going to simply right click and I'm going to say view in browser, Google Chrome. We'll give it a moment to appear in the browser. In just one moment. And here's the browser. So I click my generic button here. And what do we see? Sure enough, take a look. We have some JSON. Uh, not terribly fancy because it's just one object, but nonetheless, we do have a bit of JSON. Now, if I take this JSON and I copy it and I put it into the online viewer, uh, JSON viewer it, it it works. It is a little bit boring because it's just showing us one object, but it does work. Not to worry though, I paused the video there for a moment and what I did is I created another plant. This one is called Paw Paw. And I've added both of these to a list uh, with a generic identifier of type plant. And now I have taken all plants and I'm telling it to serialize that. So let's see what happens when we add multiple plants to a collection. By the way, I also added 10 rows to my little text field here, make it a little bit easier to navigate. So we will let it come up in the browser. And here we go. Once again, hit the magic button. And we're going to see a slightly different syntax. Uh, it, yeah, it, did, it put it all in one line, but nonetheless, we can work with that. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in our JSON viewer. Uh, we could probably format a little bit. Yeah, that looks a lot prettier, doesn't it? So what we see now is an array. That array has two different objects. Let's go to the viewer. Sure enough, there's our array. Or in other words, this thing that we see at the very top is essentially the same as the all plants collection that I started here under the covers and that I added my two plants to. So we see that, and sure enough, we see two plants. 
I could very easily continue. Oh, it looks like a, oh, well, look at that. Uh, looks like I should change this one to common name, but nonetheless, there we go. Uh, uh, so I could continue to add more plants to this. And as I do, my JSON stream is going to continue to update. Uh, and I could view it here in this viewer. Uh, before long, we get to something that, that looks like a legitimate JSON stream where we actually have multiple plants, uh, multiple things like that. I do still have one weakness though, and that is that this JSON is wrapped within a page. If I go to Control U, uh, we see that this is not going to be easy JSON to parse because it's wrapped within this HTML page. So I need to take care of that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to refactor this. And what I need to do is I need to pop this part out into its own method. I don't want to have all this logic bundled into button one click. So I highlight the parts that uh, don't have to do with the UI. So everything except for that last line where we're assigning the, the text to a JSON output. I right click and take a look at this quick action in refactorings and it, it highlights here and it's going to tell me, gosh, you know, you have something highlighted. I have a feeling that you want to extract a method. And so, uh, yeah, that's good. So I hit preview changes and um, Yep, looks uh, works for me. I'll choose apply. Uh, what method do I want to call it? We're going to call it show JSON just like so. So you see the button click handler still works there. It's simply proxying down to this show JSON method. And the show JSON method is doing all the work we did before and simply returning the JSON string uh, as a unit of work. Okay, now here's where we need to get to business a little bit. In the page load method, I'm going to say, uh, hey, I wanna take control of this page. I don't need any kind of prettiness around it. So I'm going to say response dot clear. So clear out what would normally go back to the browser. Response dot content type. And we're going to tell this that we want it to be application JSON, which is a common type for JSON, naturally. And then car set, C-H-A-R-S-E-T, equals U-T-F-8. Okay, uh, semicolon. And then response dot write. Okay, well for this we need our JSON feed. So let's call that method show JSON. If you prefer, you can do this in two different lines, but uh, or we can bundle it together all in one. And then response dot end. Okay, terminate with a semicolon and now save. Now, let's take a look at this in Chrome. So I right click, view in browser. We'll give this just one moment. And sure enough, take a look at what rendered in Chrome. So now we just have the JSON sitting out here. If I do a control U, notice it's just the JSON text. It doesn't have all of that wrapping around it. So now we've looked at a quick way to create JSON in a C Sharp ASP, uh, C Sharp Visual Studio 2017 page. In our next video, we're going to see how to filter the JSON by putting a term up here in this URL. So see if I type in oak, I get I get oak trees. If I type in maple, I get maple trees. Uh, Paul Paul. We'll just put in Paul. We get a couple of Paul Paul trees uh, back and forth like that. So we'll take a look at that in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.